Why are we so bothered about the internal capsule and the corticospinal tract? Again, this is just the same picture which I had shown earlier. And I have put a quick tabular representation of some lacunar stroke syndromes involving the posterior capsule, uh, located, uh, involving the internal capsule. We have something called pure motor stroke or pure motor hemiparesis, where the location of lesion can either be in the corona radiata, which I had shown earlier, it can be in the internal capsule, or it can be in the basilar part of pons, or it can be the medial medulla. All of them produce opposite side face, arm, and leg paralysis, pure motor. Then we have another syndrome. Mind you, this is just a few of them. There are some 20, 25 different lacunar stroke syndromes described. Another one is called the dysarthria clumsy hand syndrome, where the location of lesion is in the genu and the anterior part of the posterior lip. So therefore, the patient presents with one-sided CH7, 9, 10, 12, upper motor neuron cranial palsy and weakness of the arm. Because we remember we had said that the corticospinal tract fibers to the upper limb are located here. So the dysarthria clumsy hand syndrome, the location of stroke is here. Then we have another entity called the ataxic hemiparesis, where the location of lesion is in the posterior part of the posterior limb of the internal capsule. And here the patient presents with again opposite side weakness where the lower limbs are more weak than the upper limbs. And that's why it is referred to as ataxic hemiparesis. There are, these are just a few of the stroke syndromes involving the posterior limb of the internal capsule. So this more or less concludes our discussion of the projection fibers, the corona radiata, the internal capsule, and the clinical correlations of the posterior limb of the internal capsule, specifically pertaining to the corticobulbar and the corticospinal tracts. However, remember that there are many other